Basic Brewing Radio is sponsored in part by the American Homebrewers Association. This holiday season, give back to the brewing community when you join the American Homebrewers Association. Through December 15th, purchase an annual membership, and the American Homebrewers Association will make a $5 donation to your choice of Beer for Boobs, Soldiers, Angels, Hops for Heroes, or the Michael James Jackson Foundation for Brewing and Distilling. Learn more about these nonprofits and how to donate directly by visiting homebrewersassociation.org slash basicbrewing. And let's give back together. homebrewersassociation.org slash basicbrewing. Welcome to Basic Brewing Radio for Thursday, November 17th, 2022. I'm James Spencer. Here at Basic Brewing Radio, we're all about home brewing. This week, Matt Giovanisi from Brew Cabin and I sample the Belgian wit that I brewed after our last recipe development conversation, and we formulate a recipe for a Belgian triple that Matt's brewing. If you go to basicbrewing.com, you can find archives of our audio and video shows, and if you go to basicbrewingshop.com, you can find our DVDs and our brewer's logbooks. If you want to support us financially, check out patreon.com slash basicbrewing. And thanks to everybody who's helping out in that way. If you go to patreon.com slash basicbrewing, you can see a long list of stuff that you can access if you sign up as a supporter. This past Friday, financial supporters got to see an early release of our video episode on my Belgian wit uh, that uh, Matt and I sample in this show. They also got the recipe and a behind-the-scenes video shot by the brew pot as the beer came together. Uh, as time goes on, I'm happier all the time with that beer. <laughs> It's lighter in alcohol than we planned, but that's a good thing as the holidays approach, and I'm trying to cut some calories, uh, but in a tasty way. This Saturday at noon Central Time, Steve and I are going to be doing the uh, Brewlosophy Patron live stream on Facebook. It's uh, it's just going to be Steve and me together on video uh, for about an hour answering questions that uh, people put in the comments. And I think we're going to be sampling some of the holiday stuff that we've been brewing lately and talk about tinctures as well. I appreciate Marshall giving us the opportunity. Uh, he's also said that I can release the audio to our Patreon subscribers. So uh, our financial supporters will get to listen in too. My holiday sizer is in the bottle. I made it with uh, Musselman's apple juice. You know, it's 100% juice, not from concentrate. It's probably not the most interesting choice. But uh, as I said before, I missed out on the uh, fancy, more local cider that I usually use. It's a bit sharp because there's not much depth to that juice. Um, it does taste clean, but, you know, it's a little one-dimensional. I added some tinctures uh, before bottling to kind of add some interesting character to it. And uh, I have an idea of how to back sweeten the sizer post bottling, so stay tuned for details on that. I made that sizer with A40 GF bubbles from our friends and sponsors at Imperial Organic Yeast. Bubbles is a gluten free yeast meant specifically to ferment fruit based fermentations. I've also used it in seltzers. Uh, this sizer was about a two gallon or seven and a half liter batch, and it started at 1083. And Bubbles got to work on it in a hurry and fermented it down to uh, uh, 0.998, giving it an ABV, uh, as I figure, of 11.2%. <laughs> That's big. No starter, uh, but I did use some yeast nutrient. Uh, Steve also pitched Bubbles into a batch of cider uh, when I was at his house. And literally within a couple of hours, his airlock was showing signs of activity. Bubbles ferments cleanly and lets the fruit character shine through. Uh, we love Imperial Organic Yeast with 200 billion cells in each easy-to-open package. My stir plate is dusty because I don't use it anymore to make starters for moderate-gravity five-gallon batches, and my airlocks are usually bubbling before bedtime. Ask your local homebrew store about Imperial Organic Yeast and check them out at imperialyeast.com. That's imperialyeast.com. Next week here in the United States is going to be Thanksgiving, so I'm going to be feeding my face instead of uh, posting this podcast. Uh, so a fair warning. Don't panic. I guess, you know, you guys will figure it out if I'm not <laughs> – if the show doesn't pop up next week. I'm eating turkey or ham or whatever my family's got going on. So I hope you all uh, also 
spend some quality time with those that you care about and uh, eat some tasty stuff. Okay, Matt from Brew Cabin and I took a, a lot of time to work out the details of this Belgian triple, but first we sampled my beer, the No Barley Belgian Wit. Matt Giovannisi, welcome back to Basic Brewing Radio. Thanks again for having me. Well, I'm really enjoying these recipe development shows with you and Chris Colby. Uh, we uh, A recent video show, Steve and I sampled your American Amber Ale that uh, you and I came up with, mostly you came up with on this uh, show uh, a few months ago, and man, was it good. Wow. Uh, and I... Uh, I'm a little I'm a little intimidated. <laughs> Why? You shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> because because we came up with a recipe for a Belgian wit on this show and yep. I volunteered to brew it. Mm-hmm. Uh and it was it's a no barley wit. Mm-hmm. And we're going to sample it here. We are. In a second. Oh, yeah, it's I'm exciting. Ner- I'm nervous. I, I don't send it. my beers out for other people to taste very often and so you, you don't. Know, it's mostly just Steve and Steve's, you know, pretty kind. Sure, <laughs> and 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 whenever I have a clunker, we don't we don't show it on the on the video. <laughs> yeah, you have your yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> you have your choice to do that. But yeah, I, that was the first beer I ever sent out to anybody. Wow! So there you go. Well, well, it's nowhere but uh, downhill from there. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so let me let me go over the recipe uh, one more time for the Belgian okay. wit. This is five yeah. gallon or a nineteen liter batch. Mm-hmm. Uh, I brewed it with five pounds or 2.27 kilograms of red wheat malt. We originally said white wheat, but the homebrew store only had red. I don't think mm-hmm. it made uh, much of a difference at all. Um, three pounds or 1.36 kilograms of flaked wheat uh, and one pound or 450 grams of flaked oats. And I think in the recipe we called for torrified oats. Again, mm-hmm. the, the homebrew store didn't have those on hand at that time. Uh, but again, I don't, I don't think it make, made uh, uh, much difference. of a difference. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I boiled for sixty minutes. I did, I did a ninety-minute mash. It turned out. Uh, mm. I boiled for sixty minutes. Uh, at the beginning of that sixty-minute boil, I added one ounce or twenty-eight grams of Czech Sots at two point four percent alpha acid. Then I did a hop stand. I lowered the temperature to one hundred and eighty degrees Fahrenheit or eighty-two C. And did a 10-minute hop stand, at which time I added one ounce or 28 grams of orange zest, one ounce or 20 grams of amarillo hops at 8.1% uh, alpha acid, and mm. half an ounce or 14 grams of uh, coriander that I toasted uh, in a pan. Wait, how much coriander did you say? 14? Uh, 14 grams. Yeah, half an 14 ounce. 14 grams. Okay. Uh Original gravity, 1036, which is, I believe, less than what we anticipated. Yeah, we had 1045. Uh, it's pretty significant. Mm-hmm. Uh, final gravity, 1006, uh, for an ABV of only 3.9%. So, oh, and we used Imperial B44 Whiteout. Right. And I found a, uh, a five-month-old packet of that at the homebrew store, which Daniel at uh, North Tunnel gave me for free. Because nice. uh, the shelf life, uh, the specified shelf life from Imperial is four months. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I tell you, uh, this I pitched this uh, five-month-old packet in there. And I figured, you know, I, I wasn't going to use a starter because you and I talked about, you know, trying to, like, stress out the yeast a bit. Yeah. In a way. And it's low gravity. Yeah, and it's a low gravity beer. So it mm-hmm. wasn't, you know, like as active at bedtime as, you know, my sure. imperial pitches usually are. But by the next morning, it, it was going after it. So, yeah, uh, you know, and there was no problems there. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Um, no barley at all. No barley at all. Uh, <laughs> all of a sudden, <laughs> FM. OK. Uh, I have this thing where I, in my head, whenever I hear certain phrases, I go straight into songs from the 70s usually. So, sure. Uh, it's a curse. So anyway, uh, I sent you a six pack, uh huh, and uh, we tasted it on the show, the video show, and which uh, you'll people will see maybe by the time we. I, I can't remember when. I, it may the the uh, show may be released at the at, on the same week that I'm releasing this show. So anyway, That'd be great timing. Okay, um, I'm opening. There's only a little same. a little brief 
brief hiss here. I got a I got a good hiss. Here. Oh, good. Yeah, it's very effervescent in my. Yours. I hope it's not infected. You. <laughs> and I'm swirling up the dregs. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know what? I I didn't. You know, I didn't do that. Mine's crystal clear almost. Oh yeah, mine's clear. Really crystal clear before I was stirring up the dregs, and now yeah. I'm pouring those in. It's got a yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get the you know like the Allagash White. You're supposed to turn the can upside down. Right? Yeah. There we go. There. It's yeah. not that cloudy. No. No. But it is. It's uh. It's hazy. Let's say. Yeah. And it's got and a I nice, smell it. Got nice white head on it. Mm-hmm. And I smell it hopping out of the glass. Hmm. It's got a it's got a an orangish aroma. So what do you think? I'm not going to say anything. So I really liked it. I liked it the first time I had it. I had it earlier, um, kind of as soon as I got it. Actually, as soon as it, <laughs> I got it, put it in the fridge, let it chill down that night. Watching some football, had a friend over. We both shared it, and then I I had another one maybe about I don't know maybe a week later, and it's changed even more. Hmm. But it was, I remember the first time I had it, uh, which I don't know if this was put into my head, but I, I thought, yes, this is actually a very good beer and it's a little bitter for the style. And that's how, that's what I felt. But I was like, I really like the oranginess of it. Mm. I got a lot of that zest from it. And that has cooled, the, the, the hoppiness has cooled off. The, the, I shouldn't say the hoppiness, the bitterness has sort of tapered off for me. I th- I think uh, when I tasted the wort going mm-hmm. into the fermenter, I was like, "Woo, this is pretty bitter." I think the bitterness that I'm perceiving might be coming from the astringency of the orange peel, because and I used t- fresh orange peel. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I went to the store and I got these. You know, I went to the Wally World and I got navel oranges. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I and I used I didn't use a zester I used a potato peeler. <laughs> oh, you went the full. So, so there's probably oh, some there's probably some pith in there. Yeah. So it, it may be a little pithy, uh, mm-hmm. and that's my fault. Um, but I think you know I don't know I don't know if I get that. Okay. Okay. Steve said after after we you know after we shot the video and we were mm-hmm. tasting a bit afterwards he said you know it's it's a little it's a little pithy you know it's a little there's a, now that it's okay. warmed up and tasting a little astringency so that's what I was attributing that to I, it's not in my on my palate it's not overly bitter you know like uh, you know no, an alpha no. acid bitterness no no and I I I did get that in the first time I had it it wasn't off putting by any means. But it was, it was like, oh, that's that's a, it's got a bite. And I'll say this: um, the mouth feels dead on. I mean, obviously, with all that wheat, it's just very, very smooth. The I'm getting the Belgian yeast character. I I get like a little tiny, tiny bit of bubble gum, hmm. uh, which which I like. And and then that orange flavor. I don't really, I don't know if I get the coriander though. But yep. I, I feel that way about coriander. I love the smell of coriander. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I always want to add so much more of it. Because I'm like, oh, this smells like <laughs> tricks to me. You know, trick cereal. And, uh, or Fruity Pebbles or mm-hmm. you know, Fruit Loops or, you know, name one of those colorful cereals. Um, and I'm like, I, I think we could add a lot to it. But I'm afraid to add too much because I don't know what it'll do. Um, but I don't get a lot of coriander. I think it, it, as it warms up to room temperature... You know, like the last swig of the glass. Mm-hmm. You know, in my experience with this beer, uh, I do get a little, a little bit of the coriander, but mm. I'm okay with that. You know, because I, I'm not, I wasn't after you know a big spicy beer. You know, no, no, yeah. I think I think it's a good, it's a, it's an excellent session beer. I I like it. Uh, well, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm relieved. It's... Yeah, <laughs> because I. You know, when I when I fir- the first one I tasted, I was disappointed. Were you? Because I had these expectations in my head. I was expecting, you know, it to be more juicy, more hop juicy, mm-hmm. uh, you know, with more like orange and coriander character. And, uh, you know, it was a little lighter, 
than yeah. I anticipated. In fact, if I were to do this again, I might add like another pound of the of the malted wheat just to bring it up in gravity just a little bit. Yeah. So one of the things that uh, I didn't think about in the last episode when we did this. So the first episode when we developed the recipe for the amber ale, all of that, I used an app called Brewfather, and that was based on my system. Mm -hmm. I have my system set at 75 percent efficiency and I'm about 5,000 feet off the ground, <laughs> right? Almost like a mile. So what I realized was afterwards when you would email me and said, you know, I tasted the wort and it was a little bitter to me. And I was a little, you know, and I thought, oh, man, I didn't I didn't give you a recipe that was adjusted for altitude. <laughs> so, it, it, you know, and, and what, ha what what happens with me is because we're at such high altitude, my water boils at about 200 degrees instead of 212. Mm -hmm. So I have to add more hops to get the same amount of bitterness. So I think we over. And the other thing, too, is I'm looking at the recipe when we developed it. You had said so your Amarillo that you that you uh, did a hop stand with was at nine IBUs or uh, sorry, nine nine point two percent alpha acid, right? Eight point one. OK, I have mine set at nine point two. What was your size at? Uh, two point four. All right. I have mine at three point five. Huh. So I think we, you know, you know, on this show now that I realized. Oh, so like, you know. So you probably got a, a lower mash efficiency because you're brewing a bag, right? Um, so that may have accounted for why it wasn't at the original 1045 and instead a little bit lower, which is fine. So we'll adjust for that. And then having the uh, not not designing the recipe at altitude uh, will lower the amount of hops that we add. So when we when we send the recipe out, uh, I think we'll have those adjustments corrected. And 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 in the end, even with those tiny, you know miscalculations I'd, I'd say this is a great beer it's well, clean yeah well good good I'm, that's a relief <laughs> i mean i had two of them i i was you know it was hard for me not to drink the rest of them honestly before the show <laughs> well i've got i've got two here myself yeah uh, i love i mean i like the style a lot so it's yeah just yeah it's it's a good drinker it's a yeah and it's a good you know, I'm try I told you before the before we started recording, I'm trying to get ahead of the holidays. I'm trying to s slow down on my calorie intake going into yeah. <laughs> going into the end of the year. Yeah. <laughs> so it's no we we should all do, as right? much of an uphill climb uh, in January. But uh, uh, but you know, at only three point nine percent, you know, this is a good one, a good sipper. Uh, yeah, and full body too because of all the wheat. Yeah, and the oats. It doesn't feel like a light beer, you know. No, it's good. So what were you surprised that I take it this is the is this the first non barley beer, you know, like it's not 100 percent wheat, but it's uh, nearly. Yeah. Uh, what were your 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 perception or your your anticipated perceptions and what what were your perceptions in reality? What were you expecting and what did you. <laughs> I, I, so I was expecting a tartar bite because I know that sometimes we can give you that. I was also expecting a little bit of gloppiness. And, and maybe I don't want to say gloppiness because that sounds harsher than I mean. Just more mouthfeel. I thought it was going to be over, you know, like thick. I'll, mm -hmm. say, I'll say thick. Mm -hmm. It is not that. I, I'm not. It's it's nice. It's full bodied, but I wouldn't call it thick. I wouldn't call it syrupy. But I've never, you know, you talk, you've done those 100% rye beers. Oh, yeah. I would. I've never had that either. I'd be curious on how like i would be worried about that too being really um thick almost yeah yeah you well, know like it, palate it, palate coating like i need another beer of a different caliber to, to to cleanse my palate of the thickness yeah rye rye really can be gloppy i mean yeah. that's do a do a one gallon batch of that you know on your stovetop uh just for fun uh and and you'll see <laughs> have you ever done a hundred percent oat beer no Okay. No, getting can you get your hands on malted oats? Yeah. That's the thing is you got to have, you know, something with diastatic power, you know, with the enzymes to to uh, convert those sugars in the mash. You can get malted rye, you can get malted uh You can get wheat. malted oats, yeah. Um, but and also, I mean, I know people that throw flour in. They're like, you know, I think it's 
I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll never do it. But uh, <laughs> they throw, you know, wheat flour, oat flour into their New England IPAs, you know, just to add that extra bit of haze and thickness. Yeah, we've had, we've had a show where, uh, and forgive me, I get, and maybe I'll insert your name uh, <laughs> right here. Brooke Baber. Thanks to Brooke Baber for doing the flower experiment way back on Basic Brewing Radio in 2018. October 4th, 2018. Thanks, Brooke. For, sorry, I forgot your name. I'm old. But uh, <laughs> well, I had some delicious beers that were made with, with flour. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it wasn't the whole thing, obviously. Uh, but, yeah, the, I mean, you know, if you use brew in a bag so you don't get a stuck mash and, yeah. and yeah. you, you know, have enough uh, in, enzyme-containing malt in there to convert – uh, sure, you can do that too. Yeah, I'm. I'm, and you know, I really shouldn't be worried about the the thickness. Now, you know, that you say it, but it's no, I, 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 I you know, I'm, and I was worried about the bitterness too, and I kind of liked it personally. <laughs> I mean, I like bitter, I like bitter beers, you know. So I'm like, oh, I've not, I've never had, you know, all every time I've ever had a Belgian wit, it's always been more on the sweeter side, or at least perceived sweeter, and this one felt. It had more of a punch to it, which I kind of liked. Yeah, the you know, maybe it was the fact that we added Amarillo instead of like a noble hop at the end. You mm -hmm. know, that could have been part of it too. The more I drink this beer, the more I like it. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it too. <laughs> I think I, I was disparaging about it on the video show, or at least I didn't praise it as much as I think I probably should have. But it, it, again, I was closer to my expectations time wise. And, you know, now now I'm forgetting what I I expected, you know, after I brewed it. And now I'm just like tasting the beer standing on its own. And I think it's yeah. good. I think. It's, yeah, I think it works. It doesn't taste like a guy brewed it in his garage because <laughs> I brewed it on the patio. You brewed it on the patio. Yeah, it tastes like a patio beer. <laughs> you, you can, can taste you can just, the patio. Yeah, you can taste the cloud cover and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Taste the dogs walking by. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Taste no, I, the, that's, the neighbors yeah, mowing. I, yeah, and you know, it's, and, and to be honest, I I haven't had a lot of homebrew beers besides my own. So I don't know many. I don't know that many homebrewers personally. So this was a real, you know, not a surprise. But I'm like, okay, this is. I don't. Whatever you emailed me, I didn't agree with. <laughs> so oh, I was like, all right. My expect my your expectations. I'm like, no, this is this was really pleasant drinking. Oh, well, good. There yeah. you go. We love to talk about recipe formulation here on the show, and once you've got your recipe, you want to shop for ingredients in the easiest way possible. Well, that's where the build your own beer page on highgravitybrew.com comes in. Desiree and Dave from High Gravity in Tulsa. They, you know, they worked in the world of computers before they opened the homebrew shop and went out on their own. So, you know, it, that's why their website is so great. Uh, it shows in the functionality of the Build Your Own Beer page. Uh, on a single page, you can see the contents of a fully stocked homebrew shop. Lots of base malts, uh, some I've never used before. Uh, shame on me. But uh, lots of base malts, especially grains. Hops, yeast, fruits, adjuncts, everything all lined up and organized very well. And as you shop, your total remains visible at the bottom of the browser window. Very smart. And if you're looking for a Warthog electric system, you can use the Build Your Own Brewing System page. Take the pain out of propane and use the code EBC75BB to save 75 bucks off your Warthog purchase. Let Desiree and Dave and the rest of the family... At High Gravity, take care of your ingredient and equipment needs at family-owned and operated HighGravityBrew.com. That's HighGravityBrew.com. Well, let's see if we can go three for three then. Uh, yeah. We're here to talk about um, you wanted to do a, a strong, pale, Belgian-inspired beer. For, yeah. for your next batch. Mm -hmm. uh, and we actually are using uh, Stan Aronimus' uh, Brew Like a Monk this time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. beer that I had you buy, or that yep. book that I had you buy uh, mistakenly. I had to get the wheat book, too. <laughs> Stan. I'm, I'm, my library's growing. <laughs> I need to get a kickback from Stan. <laughs> right. 
Um, I looked in the back of the book. Uh, mm-hmm. Turn to uh, turn your hymnal to page two hundred and thirty if you've got Brew like a, like a monk at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, table eleven point two uh, has uh, it starts talking about strong pale slash golden styles, uh, and the way this book is organized, it's in the back. It's got these tables with uh, you know the it lines out the BJCP expectations, the Brewers expe- uh, Association expectations, and then it's got like uh, you know commercial examples like Duval, Avery mm-hmm. Salvation, as far as the specifics. Uh, you know, hmm. and then it's got uh, uh, Stan solicited recipes from home brewers and kind of averaged those out. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you get you get kind of a look at uh, the the average statistics on those, and then it takes a look at the ingredients as well. You know, like for instance, everybody used Pilsner. Eleven uh, percent of the people used pale malt. Thirty percent used Munich or aromatic. Um, Mm-hmm. So and then uh, there's also the tr- the triples. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's also got a recipe from uh, Vinny Chalurzo of Russian River, of course. Yep. For a strong golden ale. But then there are the triples, and so are you. Le- which which way are you leaning? Uh, but between the golden ales or strong golden ales and the triples, I'm leaning triple. It's I say a, go big or go home. It it sounds well. They, they're very similar. They're very similar. <laughs> but is it? Let's look at a. Is is one a little bit more? Yeah. Well, geez. Uh, the the yeah the strong pale golden style is uh, between seven and ten percent, whereas a triple can is kind of in the same ballpark. <laughs> so, if it's not going bigger, going home. They're yeah. The same. They're very similar. Uh. Lyle, uh, uh, Stan Aronimus quotes Lyle Brown, a home brewer mm-hmm. and homebrew judge, who is also judged at GABF, argue, uh, uh, says the bottom line is the yeast. Yeah. Uh, what's the difference between Chimay, White, and Duval? The yeasty spiciness. Mm. The Golden Strong emphasizes fruity strength, the triple spicy strength. Right. So it's 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 about the yeast. It's about the spicy characteristics of, of the, the yeast in a, in a triple. Yeah, so I want to go spicy. And there are also examples where brewers actually use spice mm-hmm. and maybe fruit, you know, yeah, maybe some citrus yeah. in there as well. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, and, and we're talking about Belgian quote unquote styles. And, right. you know, Belgian, I've talked to Peter Buchart of uh, at that time, New Belgium. And when I said, you know, how do you brew these Belgian styles? He literally brought his hands up like he was going to choke me around the throat because because <laughs> <laughs> Belgians apparently the Belgians don't like to be boxed into styles. Yeah. Uh, so with that with that caveat, um, we can do whatever we want to, you know, using these kind of guidelines. So what kind of research uh, did you do in looking at triples? So I obviously read Brew Like a Monk. That was the first place I looked because I was somebody told me to buy the book and um, I, <laughs> I was like it's just you know uh, no so I, I I did that and obviously I'd read the book for the Belgian wit so I kind of was familiar with it so I thought all right this is where I want to go and one of my favorite beers growing up was Golden Monkey by Victory which is a triple mm. so I'm like that's kind of why I'm leaning that way because I'm very very I feel like I'm more familiar with that style because I've had a ton of it when I was a kid when I lived back in uh, Pennsylvania or South Jersey. And I started to look up, you know, the recipes that are in Brew Like a Monk. I started looking up recipes from different YouTubers. I started looking at BJCP. I started looking at Chimay White, which Chimay, uh, I love all Chimay. Um, so Chimay White is one of my favorite beers uh, also. So, at, you know, started looking up clone recipes for that and all kinds of stuff. But then sort of putting my own notes together. You know, what what's this recipe doing and what's this person doing and um, sort of and then what's the, you know, BJCP and kind of coming up with just a general list. And I figured we could go through it and make our own decisions based on what we want. Now, what I'm thinking is. So I'm going to brew this beer and it's November 1st as of we're recording this. Mm -hmm. And I think this will be a nice Christmassy beer. Okay, I know. I know, you know, it's two months away, but. Well, um, it'll be here before we know it. Right. 
And I'm thinking of bottling this one, Ooh. which which I have not done in my current setup. Um, so, yeah, I'm thinking about doing like, you know, big, nice champagne like bottles. Oh, nice. Yeah. Like going that route, you know, making it sort of like a Christmas present. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. So that's that's my thought. I like it. We'll see how how, <laughs> how well that ships. But, you know. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I've got some empty boxes uh, here. I could. Oh, I, I, could, I, I could saved s- yours. Yeah, we're... <laughs> I could save you, or I could send you an empty uh, box of. Well, of course, since you're bottling, you can bottle some in twelve ounce. You don't have to bottle everything. Yeah, I could do. Yeah, so I was. Yeah, I was. I don't have a way to cork them, so we'll see. I'm. I, I, you know, it's kind of giving me a little bit of like a fun challenge. I think. Well, that'll be an to episode... do something different. You know, be, I've never it, done. It'll be a good episode of Brew Cabin. Yeah, I've no, yeah, and I had um, ideas for getting like yeah, you know, having it corked, and I have a, a brewery down the street. Maybe I could go there and cork it. Um, so we'll see, we'll see. But I do have just a bunch of random notes on fermentables, hops, water, spices, yeast, all of that stuff. Cool. Um, so we can go through each one, and I uh, already pulled up a version of you know we're going to build this in real time like we did last time except this time we're not going to build at altitude we're going to build based on um a system similar to your system and then um we'll present that out um if you want to share that recipe with people or if anybody's listening it'll be based on that you can brew it yourself and then i'll change it for my system when i'm ready to brew it uh, oh. maybe this weekend okay since i'm not injured this time <laughs> which i was injured the last time <laughs> couldn't brew the Amber ale, but between, we got there between you and Steve. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> need I to know. Keep, keep my team healthy. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I'm playing fantasy football. <laughs> uh, thank God it's not the beer causing it. You know? Yeah, yeah, for so, sure. Uh, all right, so what I've learned in from all of this is it's mostly Pilsner malt, yeah, and specifically Dingemans, um, or Frank, or uh, I think it's Belgio Franco or Franco Belgio is the name of the. Uh, there's a monster that's like uh, French and Belgian, uh, I, but I do have Dingamins on hand. I only know Franco-American, but that's spaghetti. So. Right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Chef Boardy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Thanks. laughs> uh, <that's, laughs> wait, it's called Franco-American, but it's Chef Boyardee? Well, I, that's French. That's French right? I think those are two. Are those two different brands? I don't know. We're I don't research, know. We'll research that offline. <laughs> I just remember beefaroni. I ate a lot of beefaroni out of a can as a kid. Franco American. See, that's another yeah, 70s there reference. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so, I'm going to go with Dingaman's pills. I actually have uh my my local homebrew shop. He loves Dingaman's. That's what I that's what I get for my pills and malt for pretty much everything. Um so I'm just going to start with with 10 pounds. I know we're going to have to boost it cuz we're going to go for high ABV here, but um and then there was a few other uh fermentables. And the ones that I saw crop up the most were wheat, malt, oats, which was kind of mm. – uh, oats was weird to me, uh, Munich, and aromatic or biscuit malt. Right. Because apparently if you go 100% Pilsner and, and then you do like a cane sugar to bump up the AB, ABV, it's supposed to be malty. So when I looked up the BJCP description, it's a pale, somewhat spicy, dry – Strong Trappist ale with a pleasant rounded malt flavor and firm bitterness. Mm. So I'm thinking about that pleasant rounded malt flavor. And I've used Munich to kind of bump up maltiness, but I've never used aromatic malt. Well, in, in looking again, like at uh, uh, this time on page 235 of Brew Like a Monk, they table for grain bills for homebrewed triples that he mm-hmm. received at that point in time. A hundred percent of people used Pilsner. Yep. Eleven percent used pale. Thirty-one percent mm-hmm. used Munich or aromatic. Twenty-four percent used Kara or Crystal. And ten yeah. ten percent used wheat. Uh, and then a hundred percent used sugar. Yeah. Now, interesting. Seven percent used honey. So maybe yeah. Just, so bookmark that, and we'll, we'll. I I have that. I thought I had a like. You know, I was watching a lot of tasting notes of other people drinking triples, which is what some people do online. Um, <laughs> instead of drinking yourself, a lot of people noted honey flavor without their adding any honey into it. So I thought, but well, well, instead of using maybe Belgian, Belgian candy syrup or sugar or dextrose or table sugar or whatever, maybe honey is the way to go. Yeah. 
Well, no. it's a holiday ish idea. Yeah. So I'm I'm so I'm kind of so but between the wheat and the oats, I'm kind of like, eh, I don't know how I feel about it. I, I, it's it's not going to add any malt flavor. Um, maybe round it if round it means it's got mouthfeel, but it says dry. So I'm thinking, why would you add wheat or oats if you want something that's dry? But it's not as dry as a golden ale, according to the charts uh, mm. and according to the guidelines, right? I mean, yeah. For instance, West Mall Triple. Well, well, that's relative though, because yeah, it started starts out at 1081, ends at 1010. Mm-hmm. But it's nine point six percent, so that's going to be pretty. That's going to be perceived as as pretty dry. Yeah. So I'm not sure. How do you feel about wheat or oats? Uh in my quote unquote triples or Belgians uh, back in the day, uh, I I always put some wheat in there. I don't think oh. I ever used any oats, mm-hmm. um, but I did. I did use wheat. Okay. How um, much do you think you used? Like a. You had to pick a percentage. Oh, I'm trying to think back on the recipes. It seems like my default, you know, sort of base, uh, you know, grain bill for, you know, my Belgians was like uh, 12, like 12 pounds of Pilsner and a, mm-hmm. or I might have used two row even uh, yeah. or and like a couple of pounds of wheat. OK. But that's just me, you know, back in the day. I, what did I know? <laughs> <laughs> well, how many – what's the percentage of people who use wheat in their beers? Uh, let me look. Because I'm not – I have it. 14 14 percent. I mean – And the – the uh, and the the av- – well, okay. The low was zero percent <laughs> or zero uh, in the in the beer. The highest the highest was twelve percent. The highest somebody mm. used was twelve percent. The average across all the recipes, and I it, I don't know how many recipes he averaged, but it was only sure. a half a percent. So I don't know what that means. But so it's not like people are using a whole bunch. I have a lot of flaked wheat. <laughs> I'm just sitting on a ton of it. So everything must go. Everything must. Yeah. Kitchen sink beer. Um, <laughs> kitchen sink Belgian. Uh, I, you know what? I, you know, I'm going to add it. Yeah. Why not? I'm going to do it. Sure. I'm going to be an outlier. Sure. One of the, one of the 12%. Sure. Beer. Um, and then Munich. And so the difference between Munich and aromatic, I've used Munich a bunch. I've never used aromatic. I'm assuming you have. Rarely. Rarely. But that's apparently going to give it the real maltiness more than the Munich will. And I've heard I've heard people lean more towards aromatic than Munich. And that's kind of, and because I've never used it before, I'm kind of like, oh, I want to try it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, a, a Munich slash aromatic, again, 30 percent of the people used it. Uh, the highest percentage that people some anybody used was five percent. The average yeah. the average is one percent. So apparently it goes a long way. Yeah. A little goes think, a little goes a long way. Especially in a beer like this where you want the yeast and mm-hmm. maybe the spices to shine. Um, you know, the kind of the malt is not negligible, but you know, it's a, it's sort of in the background. But it could add to that spiciness. It could play I I've heard that the that maltiness plays well with the yeast and it gives you sort of those um, spicy notes without actually adding any spices to it. Mm, okay. So Yeah, go for it. So you said that at the top, yeah, between 1 and 3%, right? Yeah, the, or, well, this is Munich slash aromatic. The high was mm. 5%, so we don't know whether that was Munich or aromatic. And okay. I'm assuming that that's the lighter Munich. You know, there's at, at, yeah. at the local homebrew store, you know, they have, you know, 10, 10 level bond Munich and 20 level bond Munich, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming right, it's, right. I'm assuming it's going to be the lighter one. The yeah, the lighter one. Yeah, because I've seen Munich be used between five and 15 percent and then aromatic and, or biscuit malt being used between one and three percent. So hmm. um, I, right now I have eight ounces of aromatic going in. At, and it's and it's right now it's coming in at three point seven, but I think I got to bump up the Pilsner malt a little bit um, because we are nowhere near uh, right. Right. where we have to go. So I'm I got twelve pounds of of Pilsner. I'm gonna go. Well, wait, wait. Should should yeah, we yeah, 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 should yeah, we yeah. put sugar, in sugar, the sugar. let's put in the sugar and or call. or honey first. 
mm-hmm. and that then you can then you can uh, true adjust okay. the base malt to fill in the gap. Okay, at least so, that's, that's the way I would do it. I don't. I, the honey thing is really interesting to me. The so I looked up Belgian candy syrup. There's a company I don't remember the name of the company, but it's light candy syrup. It comes in one pound pouches. It's called Simplicity. It's the lightest one. It's not you know it's not dark. Right. And that's, that's made with beet sugar. I've I've used their products, uh, and liked them. I mean yeah, and they go yeah. everywhere from all the way from like zero, uh, in color to you mm-hmm. know to dark. Uh, so, uh, but the, and this one, I would, I would use the next, I wouldn't use the clear. I would use the next step up if I were going to use one of their products. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of intrigued, especially around the holidays about the honey. And, and I just brewed or brewed, made a, I'm a step on people's toes. I made a sizer this past weekend with some, uh, really nice honey that I found at, the uh, giant club store, uh, mm-hmm. but it tasted really good. So yeah. I don't know it's you know you're going to be brewing this. It's uh, it's uh, it's up to you. But but I I'm I, I, I want to split. Honey. I want to split the difference. Oh, I want to do one pound of that light Belgian candy syrup in the one pound container, and I'm going to do one pound of local honey. Ooh. That can't be bad, right? <laughs> now, is the now whenever I do a Belgian, I only do just do the one pound. But I've seen, yeah, I've seen. I mean, look, we have twelve pounds of pills. We have two pounds of you know liquid sugar, essentially one pound of flaked wheat, and eight ounces of aromatic. So we're upwards of 15 pounds, eight ounces with this system at 70% mash efficiency. We're at 7.4%, which we could go a little higher. Oh yeah. Okay. Now looking at the stats again, yeah. On brew like a monk, everybody used sugar. Mm -hmm. Uh, The lowest was 6%. The highest was 18%. And then the average, and again, we don't know how many recipes he surveyed. Yeah. 12, 12%. Right now we're at, 13% 13% with two pounds of sugar. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I could right, probably bump right up the, uh, the, the Pilsner malt to about 14 pounds and that'll get us at 8.1%. And that brings the aromatic down to two, you know, 3%. And then the rest will go down to about 12%. This, the sugar. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a five gallon or 19 liter batch. Yeah. We, we have it set at six gallons batch volume, but when it's all said and done, you know, with some losses, right? Uh, you know, so yeah, it's 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 going to be upwards of you know, and I have to change this for my system, but um, yeah, it's eighty percent pills and malt, and then basically, uh, you know, six percent uh, candy syrup, six percent honey, six percent flaked wheat, and then three percent aromatic. Mm, okay, that feels right. Yeah, feels right. Um, okay, so moving on to hops, uh, I've looked at pretty much, uh, there are some Belgian breweries that use North American hops, but most of them are using noble hops. Um, you know, Sots, there's, uh, Tetning, uh, you know, Hollatower. I have, I think I have Hollatower and Sots on hand. Oh, you know what? Um, you know what? I was looking at the, uh, I was looking at the, tra- that, the chart for the golden ale. On the, oh on yeah, the sh- on the sugar, uh, okay, and maybe some of the other stuff too. <laughs> oh okay, <laughs> uh, I mean it's close. Uh, but okay, all right. So, but for the sugar, for example, the low yeah. everybody used sugar. The low was four percent. The high was twenty two percent, and the average was twelve percent. So it's it's simple. Yeah, we're still it's, there. We're still at twelve. Sim- yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whew. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're good. I'll have to. Okay. So. I'm thinking we just stick with noble hops. There's no sense in if if it's looking for a a firm bitterness is what the BJCP wants. So firm bitterness to me, I feel like that's where you're going to get. You know, I, I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd necessarily go with a uh, North American hop. No, you know, or at least like not a, a you know a, a modern hop. You know, maybe Sterling if you wanted to. If you had Sterling over Sots, maybe that would be the way to go. But. Um, I've also seen uh, Styrian Goldings as well, mm. and even uh, East Kent Goldings, but that's more British. And yeah, I 
uh, and and by the way, I'm flipping back and forth between these two charts, and they're pretty they're pretty similar. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty similar. <laughs> Phew. <laughs> I, I'm I'm sticking between Sots and Hollow Tower. I um, yeah, I, of course. Again, my my go to, and somebody asked me at HomebrewCon, uh, why do you use Sots all the time? And I was like, well, it works. <laughs> yeah, it, it works. Yeah. It, it gets it gets a predictable result in my system, and you know, it gives me a nice clean bitterness. And that's yep. just that's just what I use. I mean, and I and I'm leaning more towards that. I I made a beer uh, recently with a. I bought a pressure fermenter just to give it a shot. Uh-huh. And and I the first beer I made was a a German Helles or a Fest beer. I made it. I was trying to do Oktoberfest, right? Where you you know you with the pressure fermentation you speed it up. Um, it didn't really work out because I had a, a hairline crack in one of the metal barbs. Oh no! Um, so it wasn't holding pressure. And and I used uh, Hollow Tower and Middle Fru particularly, um, and I'm probably butchering that, but all of these hop names. Um, but it was a little too floral for me, mm. and I'm like, I'm not, a, you know. So I'm going to go with Sots on this one. Okay, I think. And, and so you're brewing under pressure. <laughs> I immediately, oh boy, I immediately went to answer that as if it was a. Forgot about that. <laughs> okay, uh, we do. I don't own the copyright to that. And uh, do you like that song? Do I like that song? Yeah, for David for critique for, for critiquing Absolutely. purposes. Absolutely. Okay. Well, there you go. We've had two snows already this year in Northwest Arkansas. Winter is apparently here to stay. It's a great time for something big and delicious from our friends Ricky and Kelly of Groenfell and Havoc Meaderies in Vermont. I'm talking about Winter Warmer. Winter Warmer is based on a historic wassail recipe that features wildflower honey, bright blood orange, and warm cinnamon, vanilla, nutmeg, and cloves. It comes in a 750 milliliter bottle and weighs in at 13.8% ABV. Something different from the delicious, more sessionable craft meads from Groenfell and Havoc, but it's winter. It's warm. Or you need warm warming with a winter warmer. It's it's a limited release that you can order at Gronfell.com. And when I say limited release, if you want winter warmer, you might want to order soon. Some of the other limited releases that I've talked about recently, Golden Apple of Discord, Hegear, Bourbon Barrel Aged Veneer, they're gone. Uh, but there's still plenty of big, beautiful meads available, including winter warmer, bourbon barrel aged braggy. And bourbon barrel aged headgear. Check out all the honey based deliciousness that you can have sent to you in most states across the country from family owned and operated Gronfell.com. That's G R O E N N F E L L. One ounce of SOTS gets us to 10 IBUs. Um, I've, I, you know, as far as like when to add these things, we need to get around 27 IBUs is kind of the mean. Uh, so I could, I've seen it go from like, I think 18 to 30 IBUs. I don't know what the book says. Um, but I, I kind of feel we could keep it simple and do, um, saws at boil and saws at flame out. I, of course, this is again, your, your beer, but uh, you know, whenever I brew a Belgian inspired beer, Mm -hmm. I, I just keep it to the. 60 minute edition but that's just me especially if you're going to use spices no, well but but again uh and and I'm trying to look up the the uh the G, BU to GU uh uh ratio but it's mm-hmm. it's uh it's not it's not a bitter beer <laughs> no <laughs> okay uh uh Trip, triples of the hoppiest, hoppiest being a relative term of the Trappist-inspired beers with the BU to GU ratios, that's bittering units to gravity units, uh, reaching up to one to two. Mm. So, you know, like, for instance, if, you're, if you've got a beer starting out, I think the way this works, if you've got a beer starting out at 1080, you know, you want to get around uh, uh, 40 IBUs. For a 1080 beer. Hmm. Okay. But he yeah, says, 40's uh, at the top 40's at the top end of the Belgian triple BJCP uh 
guidelines. It's between 20 and 40. But he says that, that uh, some examples may be as low as one to four or one to five. So, mm, mm-hmm. yeah, again, it's it's going to be up to you. But well, looking at some of these recipes that I pulled up, um, just I, I got I have one that's a Chimay clone, which is interesting. Um, that is EKG, uh, not even a full ounce at sixty minutes, and then Holla Tower Herbs Bruck, Herbs Herbs Brucker. At 60 minutes. So basically two ounces of hops at 60 minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, this other one I see is uh, one ounce of hollow tower at 60 minutes, one ounce at. Oh, sorry, two ounces at 60 minutes, one ounce at 10 minutes and one ounce at flame out. Oh, so that's interesting. Mm. So I got I got it set at two ounces of sot set at uh 60 minutes, which is giving us exactly 20 IBUs. You know, they say you know, the, the software is not going to let me, it's not going to give me IBUs for flame out, unfortunately, even though we know we're going to get some. Uh, we could do another edition of SOTS, maybe 15 minutes. <laughs> I don't know. You're thinking too hard. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, homebrewer uh, recipe in this in this in the in, this, in this book for a tri- the triple is yeah. from uh Joel uh Pluchak. Mm-hmm. Uh original gravity 1087 23 IBUs of tetanang at 60 mm-hmm. minutes and then uh, there was a 5 minute 1 IBU edition of sots. Yeah. Uh so, you know, 24 IBUs for a 1087 beer. If I read that correctly, I like I, 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 you know, for my hopping schedule in most beers, I keep it super simple. Mm-hmm. You know, I try to think, you know, nowadays, I mean, but in, back in the day, it was what the 60, 30, you oh, know, God. 15, 10, zero, <laughs> yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> nowadays, it's mostly like it's either either I'm bittering or not, you know, 60 minutes or not. And usually I do first wart because I figure, well, why not? Mm-hmm. Um, if it helps, you know. Reduce boil overs, that that sort of thing, um, and I don't have to remember to do it as soon as it starts boiling. As soon as I transfer it to the kettle, I add my hops. I'm good to go, and then I do either flame out or hop stand, and that's pretty much all I've ever done. Mm-hmm. Um, not all I've ever done in my life, but I'm saying that's usually what I'm doing now. Right. <sighs> but I, I think that's becoming common knowledge. Yeah. So I'm wondering if we just split it. We do we do four ounces of hops total. We do four we do two ounces at the boil and two ounces at like right before flame out. Okay. And I think that'll get us where we need to go. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. Keep it uh keep it simple. So I'm gonna do two ounces of sots. Sods? Saws or sots? What do you say? Oh god. I know. Some it's, people say zots. Uh, I don't know. I say I say okay. I say I say it quickly so nobody can. <laughs> complain yeah, about it. that's smart. Yeah, sots. I usually say yeah. sots. I don't know. Okay. Well, that's what I'm going to go with. Four ounces total, two and two. You know, sixty minutes. I'm going to do a five minute edition and be done with it. Okay. And um, so next on the list is I mean we can talk about water, but let's talk about yeast because. From all my research, there's really only two. And that's the West Male yeast or the Chimay yeast. Now, um, in the Imperial world, uh, the West Male is B48 triple double, and Chimay is B36 monastic. Hmm. Kind of feel like I could go either way. But I believe the Chimay is going to give us more spice and the West Mail is going to give us more fruit, I think is what I read. That sounds that sounds right. And I feel like since we're I know we're making a triple, but we're also making a like a Trappist. So I'm going monastic with this one. What do you think? OK. All right. Uh, I think either one is going to be good. Yeah, I kind of think so, too. Really, I think I think it'd be interesting to see you know what characteristics you get with either either one of them. Yeah, I'd say it's a it, it's the flip of a coin, especially since I, we're I not we're not trying to enter a, comp, a competition or you know this is going to be a delicious beer. What what whichever you choose is going to be delicious. 
Yeah, and I can give um, the other yeast, too, if you want. Um, so with the triple-double uh, B48, there's also WLP530 and Y yeast 3787. And then with the Chimay one, which is kind of where I was leaning, you can get WLP500 or uh, Y yeast 1214. So uh, my local homebrew shop only carries White Labs. Oh, uh, the one that's down the street from me, but I have another one that's a 20 minute drive that does all three and, and, and more and all those. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to try to pick up the Imperial Monastic from the other store and we'll go from there. Do you, do um, you want to name check your, your homebrew stores? No, I don't have to. Can I? Is it... <laughs> sure. I mean, you know, we're all in well, this together. <laughs> the one, the one down the street from me is the bald brewer. Um, and he carry and I know and now Y East has a uh, they're they're stepping up their package packaging game. Uh and then there's uh Boulder Fermentation Supply in, in Boulder. Okay. Colorado. All right. Um so we have that. And the other thing we have to talk about is water profile. And this one was the hardest one to research. I I didn't get a straight answer. They're like, it could be soft water, it could be hard water. <laughs> Or it could be balanced water. And I'm like, all right, well, I, this is one of those. What's, you know, I, I think about the, just going back to the description in BJCP. I think about firm bitterness, right? That's gonna. I'm either thinking hard water or balanced water with that. But then pleasant rounded malt flavor mm-hmm. is gonna be softer water. So I don't. I don't. I don't know. I guess maybe you split the difference. Just go balanced, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of where I'm. That's kind of where I'm headed. Now we we haven't talked about spices. Do you want to? Do you want to? Oh, yeah. Do you want to even mess with like fruit? You know, like citrus peel or spices, or or do you want it to be all about the the yeast? I kind of want it to be all about the yeast, since you, we just did a beer that was orange peel and coriander. Mm-hmm. Um, which would work in this beer. I've heard licorice root. I've heard black pepper. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite beers is New Belgium's Triple, uh, and they use coriander and maybe maybe orange peel. I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, in, yeah. In there as well. Um, it's a, and I, it's and a I, delicious beer. Yeah. And but I, and but it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty spice forward, though. It is. Wow. I, I, I've definitely had that beer. Is it called? What's it called? It's it's tri- It's Triple. T- yeah. But they use two P's, T R I P P E L. Ah. Um, and some around here, and I don't know if it's everywhere, but. Round here. Round here. <laughs> now See you're it? doing it. Man, that's just <laughs> 90s, though. Mine, that's where my. <laughs> but in, in this neck of the woods, they some people, some breweries call their triples tripels. Tripels, right. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't think that's right. I, no, just, I don't, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I think I even emailed Stan Hieronymus one time. Okay, settle an argument, Stan. What is it? Yeah, I triple. Know. I think it's triple. Yeah, I. But I have heard uh, double though. Yeah, I've heard that too. Instead of double. Yeah. I don't know. To it's... each their own. <laughs> you know, to, tomato, tomato. Yeah, if it's good. Although beer... if you call it tomato sauce, I'm definitely gonna <laughs> have to hurt you. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> <laughs> potato, mashed potatoes. <laughs> yeah. In what world, my friend? In what world? Now this is a worldwide show. People can <laughs> say what true. you want. You can say what you want. That's true. <laughs> as a as an Italian, <laughs> tomato sauce. Although we do call it gravy, so I don't I don't know where I'm, where I'm from, <laughs> which is which I believe is wrong. Uh, so, um. I, I don't know. Like, I, I'm sweet. Like, doing fresh orange peel sounds very appealing. Coriander sounds appealing. <laughs> so to speak. I just said, you know what I just said. <laughs> orange peel sounds appealing. That's yes. um, I, I was going to let it, it go. Picked up, picked up what I'm putting down. So, <laughs> uh, and, and because it's kind of, I'm thinking it may be like a Christmassy beer, that maybe I do the spice. I don't know. I don't know. Or is it put? Is it a hat with the honey and and is it? A yeah, hat? I kind of want to let that shine through. Is it a hat on a hat? You know. Yeah. Let's go. Know. Let's 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 see how it let's see how it breathes on its own. That's what you I could said. you could always taste it after it's and done add it later, right? and add a tincture. 
Yeah, that's true. I'm I'm gonna stick with uh, I'm gonna go plain and simple, traditional. Maybe sounds, sounds good. And uh, the other two things is is the mashing schedule and the fermentation schedule. So, um, you know, looking at the book, majority of people are using a step mash. You know, because you're you're definitely gonna want this beer to be dry, and we might have to do multiple rests, which you know you can do in your system. I can do in my system. Um, I've seen a couple of different uh, mash rests. Uh, I think I'm going to stick with one that kind of appealed to me, which was uh, you rest at 48 degrees Fahrenheit or 64 C for 45 minutes. 158. Wait, say that again. Okay. So step mash, <laughs> three steps, right? First step, 148 degrees okay, Fahrenheit. Okay, 148. I, th- I thought you said 48 degrees. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I did. 148 degrees Fahrenheit, 64 degrees C, and that's for 45 minutes. 158 degrees Fahrenheit for se- or, or 70 C for 30 minutes, and then uh, a mash out at 170 or 77 C uh, for 15 minutes. Huh. Interesting. There's, I've, I've seen that one, and I've seen – that's the one I think I want to go with because it just seems almost like you could – you know, the reason I want to go with that one is because – uh, if you're deciding to do an infusion, like a single infusion, then you could just do 148, mm-hmm. and I think you're I think you're good, right? Right, but you're but you're kind of doing an alpha beta kind of a thing. Alpha beta, yeah. Alpha alpha I've, amylase and then beta amylase. Yeah, the other one I've seen is doing a I think it's a protein rest at 127 or 53C, and then a, and then a uh, a 20, that's a 20 minute rest and then a 60 minute rest at 152 or 67 C. But I, I mean, you're, you're adding two pounds of sugar. Yeah. And I think it's going to be thin enough. Yeah. I don't think I, I, I would be a, f- a little afraid of, of doing a, a low temperature rest. I would agree. Yeah. That's why I'm, I'm, that's why I like the idea of the 48, 148 degree Fahrenheit <laughs> and 158. Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with that. And then um, fermentation wise, it's kind of, uh, th- I've, it's just, this is sort of, you know, I've not, I want to say set in stone, but uh, pitching at 65 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know the Celsius on that one. And, uh, oh, wait, maybe I do know the Celsius on that one. I do. Uh, 65 degrees Fahrenheit or 16 C. Okay, and then uh, you can let it free rise up to seventy five degrees Fahrenheit or twenty four C, but not trying not to go over seventy five, mm. uh, because then you start getting these like fusel alcohol notes and solventy notes, um, which is not good. But you but you know letting it get that high will still give you those esters without giving you the, you know, alcohol bite. Now the. Uh, Several brewers over the years have have told me, uh, including like Adam Avery at uh, mm-hmm. Avery Brewing, you know they they control the temperature during the first you know first part of the fermentation. Uh, say I don't I can't remember the specifics, but say twenty first twenty four hours, or you know when it's really yeah. starting to kick up, and then yep. they just turn off the cooling. And let it <laughs> let it let happen. It go. Yeah, <laughs> and, you know it might rise up to like you know eighty or or not or maybe ninety. You know yeah, Fahrenheit, yeah. Um, which is like in the thirties. Uh, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. uh, but you know, but you know, it depends on how spicy you want it to be. You know, how crazy you want to let the yeast get. I like that idea, actually. <laughs> I like that idea because I can, you know, I can control, you know, I have obviously I, can, I I thought about just leaving it at 75 and letting it go the whole time. I like the idea of suppressing the ester development in the beginning and then sort of letting it kind of do its thing in the end and getting. And if we're not going to add spices, mm-hmm. maybe let's let's see what this thing can do. Mm-hmm. As long as we pitch an, an adequate amount of, of cells, mm-hmm. you know, I say if we're if you know, obviously with Imperial will be good. I. You know, whether I do a starter or add two packets, I'm not sure, you know, depending on time. Um, What's your starting gravity? But, uh, in this one, and I might go a little bit higher, if I'm being honest. Uh, well, I, don't, I might go higher with just my system because my system set might, might be 
a match efficiency of like 75 to 80. Mm. So it's going to be between eight and like nine and a half percent. So it's up there. So you're in the 1080s. Yeah, for sure. In there. Yeah. Yeah. For uh, this is one where I might I might make a starter with. Yeah. With even with Imperial. Yeah. You even know, a starter or two packs, depending again, depending on time. Yeah. Um, you know, worst case, you know, if I get two packs and I don't, and I decide to make a starter, then I got an extra pack for another one. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pitch an, an adequate amount of, I don't even want to, you know, I, 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 even in, I think in Stan's book, it's, it, there is some, <laughs> you can, you can toe the line, right? If you wanted to do the experiment, um, there, apparently there's a line where if you'd pitch like a little bit less than, you know, than you should, you start to get really interesting flavors and you can make a really good beer with that. Yeah. But if you go too low, you get and rocket, you're not, rocket fuel. Yeah. Yeah. You might. Yeah. So you're, there's this line where it's like, you know, you get these really interesting flavors. If you kind of a little bit under pitch, I don't even know if I want to play that, that, uh, game of Russian roulette. It's a, you're going to have a, it's a pretty big investment at this point. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to go adequate amount of yeast. I'm going to, I'm going to, Pitch at 65 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm going to let it free rise, and I'm going to cap it at 75. Okay. That's what I think I'm going to do. But it, it, I'll let it free rise and see you know, how crazy it gets. <laughs> and if it starts to get too crazy, then I might, I might, I might suppress it a little bit. So, uh, you know, on the upper at 75 to 80, I might suppress it a little bit. Now, but, now yeah. usually in, in, a, uh, in a beer, I don't, I, I don't know that I've ever – added nutrients to a, to a beer just you know because mm. i think the grain will take care of the job but you know you're you got two pounds of sugar in this five gallon batch yeah are you gonna add any nutrients i i always do oh. as an insurance policy and I, I so one of the things i'm having a really hard time getting here is oxygen <gasps> no i mean in, in the <laughs> Well, you're up 5,000 <laughs> feet. That's true. <laughs> but I'm having a hard time getting like those small red can, red cans that you get at the, at the, they're like, we're, we're having like a shortage or something. Oh, interesting. But, um, I had, I had a company send me a, um, an oxygen regulator thing for one of those. And I have an oxygen wand and I, I have a new fermenter that's pressurized, but it, it has the, uh, oxygen stone built into it. Hmm. So I thought. You know, in this, and I don't do it all the time, obviously right now because I'm out of oxygen. But I, I would probably add oxygen to this, yeah, which I normally don't do. Yeah, you just kind of aerate on the way into the fermenter. Uh, no, <laughs> I used to and do you that. Don't even shake. <laughs> I used to do that, and I so the you know like you had the amber ale. I that was a uh, that wasn't beer. aerate at all. It's a beautiful beer. I know, and and I, I was. <laughs> I kind of go back and forth on it. I, you know, you know, for a while I thought you have to add oxygen. You have to, e you know, either shake it. I used to have this, uh, like a drill bit with a big fan on it that you would, you know, throw in there and it would whip up the, 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 the wort so that you would get all that oxygen in there. Cause I didn't have, I didn't like having oxygen around. And then I started using oxygen. I thought my beers got better. And then I stopped using it cause I, they ran out or I just was out <laughs> And your and beers were still good. Different. Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> okay. But then I started, you know, I used to splash into the, you know, I used to like drain it out of the kettle and splash it in. But now I have a system where I plug it into the bottom of the fermenter and it fills from the bottom up. So it's not really getting any splashing at all. And the last, I don't know, the last three or four beers I've made have been like X, like beyond goods. And and I don't know if that, I don't know why. But maybe, I always, Maybe you're adding enough yeast. Yeah, that's true. Too. I mean, or maybe it's because I just add the yeast nutrient kind of automatically now. Oh, well, I just do it. I do, you know, 2.2 grams of it of the Y yeast nutrient. And um, and I do that mostly as a fail safe just in case, you know, if the, if the yeast doesn't kick off or whatever. So, that'd be yeah, a, I don't know. That'd be a fun experiment. Yeah, that would be. I don't I don't no, know. No aeration. And no nutrient versus no aeration and nutrient. You know that would be a good experiment. Can, can yeast nutrient make up for poor <laughs> for poor aeration? Poor aeration. Yeah, because <laughs> that would solve a lot of problems. Yeah, you know, because I, I, I people, you do get sort of, you know, 
I, I kind of feel like in the homebrew space, like you have to aerate your wart. And I'm like, I, I was on that train and that last couple beers. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Well, there was that whole thing many years ago with the olive oil. Oh, um, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. When somebody asked me at homebrew con, what do you think of olive oil? And I said, she's too skinny. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so that's what i'm gonna do okay i'm gonna pitch enough i'm gonna try to aerate if i can get my hands on an oxygen tank i will do it uh, if not there will be no oxygen it'll just be <laughs> nutrient and lots of yeast Woo, okay so um yeah that's that's i think that's it well that sounds like a plan i'm very excited yeah. Because this is this is one of my favorite styles. Yeah, and I'm and I'm. My thought was, and I've never, I have not done this in the setup that I have. Um, like I've bottled beers before in the past, and I've done the carbonation tablets, right? Because that you've done. Do you use the ones that look like aspirin or the ones that look like giant rock candy? Usually the rock candy, the carb, the big one. carb the Cooper, drops. Cooper's ones. Yeah, the the carb drops. Um, okay. Mainly because they're just it's just easier. Easier. Yeah. So I thought um, and that's what I, this and that's what this. No, no, no. I batch I batch primed the the Belgian wit. Oh, you did. Yeah. It's like three quarters of a cup of sugar and uh, in no, or dextrose in the, you know, in. The, Ooh, I wonder if I could prime with honey. But well, you can. Steve used to mm, do it. Yeah. It, it, that was the rate of like I think he used like half a cup of sugar or of uh, honey per five gallon batch. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, I I I hear my thought was this. So I have this fermenter um, that is that can be pressurized. I think up to fifteen psi. And I thought I won't pressure ferment because I want those esters to 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 you know, develop and I don't want, um, so I'm not going to ferment under pressure, but <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I won't do that. But I thought about adding, like, as I go to bottle, instead of kegging it, I could bottle directly from the fermenter and just add pressure to the fermenter and then use like a beer gun or something. Oh, like a counter pressure. That's another yeah. toy for you to get. Yeah, I have a I have a uh, a beer gun, a, a counter pressure bottle filler. I, I, I yeah, <laughs> uh, I have one, and I'll I, I I thought about doing that, and then I can use the pressure inside the fermenter to fill the bottles directly, and then, and then I couldn't decide whether I should do the carbonation tablets, which I also have, or batch prime it, which I could do as well. Well, if you I mean if you get it carbonated, you and you use the counter pressure bottle filler which i think is iambic quadrameter uh you don't need the the to prime you you know you just it's just that it that's it oh no i don't mean i don't mean uh pre carbonating in the in the vessel and then filling carbonated beer oh i meant i meant bottle conditioning oh okay okay yeah yeah but just using uh, a slight amount of co2 to push the oh, beer you I know got... out okay because I my yeah because my fermenters I can't lift up on a table they're just they're too heavy but um yeah so I, that's why I know first world problems um Wah. so yeah I guess I, uh, I guess carry some, him my six and a half gallon carbo glass carboys up and downstairs and my <laughs> wham burger with a side of French fries. <laughs> Uh, okay. So yeah, I, I just <laughs> I also thought maybe going with one of those you know if it's going to be Christmas and maybe a special occasion doing those like um I don't know what those champagne bottles sure cork, maybe yeah, yeah. that's something I never done before I thought maybe it would, you know be interesting to kind of experiment with that and you can get uh, champagne bottles that you can cap too oh right yeah that's yeah there's a yeah the brewery down the street that's what they do I think we got a plan or you got a plan um, yeah. And I'm 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 really looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm going to try to. I mean, this is a it's a Tuesday as we're recording this. I'm going to try to do it this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Strike while the iron's hot. Exactly, so to speak. Get it get it done a little bit faster than the amber beer. <laughs> well, well, it, 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 it'll be worth waiting for. I'm sure. However, yeah. If it's in, if it's half as good as the as the uh, amber. Uh, oh, appreciate boy, that. That was yeah. really good. 
Well, Matt, this has been fun again. And again, yeah. you, they can find you at brewcabin.com or the uh, or swim university <laughs> or the or those corresponding youtube channels as uh-huh. well. Yep, if you got a pool or a hot tub, you've probably seen my dumb face. <laughs> <laughs> it's on every thumbnail. <laughs> well, there you go. Thanks, Matt. Oh, well, appreciate it. Thank you, James. Well, thanks again to Matt. Again, check out brewcabin.com and the Brew Cabin YouTube channel. Also, Swim University, if you've got a pool or a hot tub. Matt will help you figure out all that stuff. And uh, I look forward very much to his triple. Next week is Thanksgiving, so uh, we're taking the week off. But we'll be back with more fun stuff uh, post... Uh, oh, oh, before I forget, send in your disaster show stories uh, your, your for our annual disaster show. And, and Steve and I are going to get together at the end of this week to figure out when we're going to record. So, you know, it's probably going to be in a couple of weeks. So get your stories in now uh, so that uh, we can get you fixed up. Uh, in the meantime, <laughs> if you have brewing questions... Show suggestions or just want to say howdy, write to james at basicburn.com or just fill out the contact form at basicburn.com. And please don't forget to tell us where you're from. Check out our mobile-friendly shop at basicburnshop.com. Thanks to everybody supporting us through our Patreon page. Remember, you'll get to hear the audio from the uh, Brewlosophy thing uh, this weekend unless we just completely screw up. And then it's going to be... <laughs> It's going to be into the vapor. <laughs> if we say stuff that will get us canceled, he won't be hearing it. Uh, special goodies coming your way on patreon.com slash basic brewing. We may be drinking beer. That's all until next time. Until then, thanks for listening, everybody. I'm James Spencer, production help for Basic Brewing Radio, and our website is provided by Kelly Dots and Basic Brewing Radio is production back to voicing. We'll talk to you next time. In the meantime, stay well and stay tuned. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. So long.